We just finished feeding Jumbo 4500 gallon. I think Thug ate more than I have ever seen him eat, even given his insatiable greed. I don't know, he ate like three or four pounds, I don't know, maybe five pounds of fish. I think uh, one, two, two huge pieces of giant squid. Probably three or four pieces of uh, cut mullet. Altogether, I, I cut the mullet, each mullet is pretty big, like five to seven pounds. I cut the mullet in four pieces, so he ate a whole mullet and then probably a pound and a half of giant squid. He's sitting, sort of, with his uh, tail towards us. He doesn't want to turn to show us his insane stomach. Are you going to turn around or turn sideways for us a little bit? Show us your beauty sideways. Leary eye. He hasn't eaten today, which I was surprised about. The smaller red tail ate a lot too. As I said before, the these catfish, red tail hybrid, tiger shovel nose, when they're between one and a half and two and a half, three feet, they eat tremendous amounts of food. Once they reach about three feet, they slow down by 10 or 20 times. At least in our tank, that's what I've noticed. If you notice the same thing, let me know in the comments. Or a different thing. Do the same, please. Mr. Jow's a little cranky today. Well, he didn't, he didn't want anything again. He didn't want the squid, he didn't want the large mullet. I don't know if he took any pellets. It looks like he took them in his mouth and then spat, out, spat them out. This is Greg's red tail. I think it's a she and she just about tripled in size I would say too just like the peacock bass from yesterday's video probably added another half a foot or eight ten inches to the to the length and at least three times to the mass Paroons are resting, they haven't eaten. I mean, today the big paroon grabbed one piece of squid, but that's that. That's nothing for them. The big hybrid took one piece. He only feeds about once on, on, on the... He likes pellets, or he takes pellets at least. But as far as fish, he takes one every other feeding. The big ragtail took a piece of squid and that piece of mullet. This is, this is, I mean, each feeding, that, that's unusual for him, for the big red tail. He usually just take, feeds every other or every third feeding. While the small red tail, smaller red tail, picks out each time. So that's another example of the difference. The big red tail is about three and a half foot, and the smaller one is about two and a half foot. foot.
the barons the figure on their differences the bigger guy is chasing the smaller one a little bit just showing him his place here is the amazing thug look at his stomach it's ridiculous He looks like a gulper catfish. Maybe he thinks he's a gulper. As I said before, we, I mean, we just recently, like two weeks ago, we had three red tails. The medium sized red tail was adopted. So for now we're back to just having two. All in all, in about in the last 15 years or so, we rescued and adopted at least a hundred red-tailed catfish, and probably 50 of the hybrid catfish. So they are they are poster poster children for people not doing their homework when buying fish. They think they can uh, keep them in a 50 gallon, 20 gallon, 100 gallon. You cannot stunt a fish to, to a one tenth or a one fifth of its size. You can stunt at 20%, 30%, 40%, maybe 50%. But that's that. Red tail is supposed to grow to four or five feet, so it'll grow to two and a half feet no matter what you do, no matter how small its tank is. Plus, as, as you know, the, you can stunt the skeleton, skeletal muscle structure, but muscular structure, but you cannot stun the internal organs. So internal organs will grow as they do in the wild or in the small tank or in the big tank, it doesn't matter. So your stunted two and a half foot red tail houses internal organs of a five foot red tail. And it's only, by length it's only two times difference, but by, by weight it's easily a ten times difference. So all of their internal, internal organs are squished inside in an unhealthy, deformed manner. So that's no good. Please don't do that. I think overall, uh, over the last 15 years or so that we've been rescuing fish first in, in upstate New York, in Rochester, New York, in the vicinity, and sometimes all over the New York State. And now for uh, 12 years down here in Florida. Overall, people, I think, got much more responsible. There was less, there was less rescues in my, in my experience. Maybe that of Ohio Fish Rescue differs, but in my experience, there's less less of these giants that need rescue out there yeah look at him that's thug and the big hybrid thug is working real hard to catch up with the big hybrid just half a year ago he was half the size Plus the uh, fish shops are doing better job, again, everything is relative, relative to how it used to be, they're doing better job warning people of how big their potential purchases would get, and they ask people before they buy what size their tanks are, etc., trying to give them good advice. Not everybody, not everywhere, not uh, no, far from it, but 
relative to how it used to be, I think it's getting better, which results in less rescues for us, which is a welcome thing. It's excellent. I think awareness is the way to go. We should continue on the awareness road as opposed to waiting for the government to regulate and ban the sales of this fish or that fish or ban, this, ban this, the free sales but conditional sales like you have to prove something if you have a large enough tank I, I, I'm not a believer in, in the government uh, efficiency this is a huge bureaucratic machine that that's heartless and soulless I think you will be sorry eventually that you let government make your decisions for you, for you. They will overreach, they will pursue their own interests. And the result will be you, you and our children and our grandchildren will lose the freedom of keeping whatever fish they want to try to keep and, and learn about firsthand. And that will suck big, big time. Anyhow, here's my little rant and Thug and Greg's female RTC both looking swell, pun intended.